Well, I pride myself on being both cheap and shallow. Uh, CIP. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Good evening. I'd like to welcome everybody to the regular meeting of the North Brantford Planning and Zoning for Thursday, October 3rd. In attendance are our regular members, De Francisco, Mays, Sienna, and Dulac. Uh, first order of business is our meeting minutes from the 19th. Uh, so we do have all, uh, yeah, uh, Trish was absent. Uh, if you, if Ron and um, <coughs> Alex, do you want go ahead? I'll choke up a little bit. I'm all set. <laughs> oh, you're all set? Yeah. I'm not crying, okay. I'm just choking up a little bit. <laughs> 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 you good? Yep. By motion, we accept the uh, meeting minutes for September 19th. I'll second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? It was uh, in Trish abstains. It passes 3 to 0. First order of business. Uh, well, not the first order of business, but the next order of business is, um, let's see, are we doing hearing. first? Do which ones? I thought we were doing PLCD first. Yep, that's Oh, okay. That's, that's that. listed first. Oh, okay. So we can read, uh, if somebody wants to read all three of these, Bill's not here, so I'm sure this will go fast. I hope he won't be watching. <laughs> Everybody said that. <laughs> Uh, um, this is the legal notice of the North Brantford Planning and Zoning Commission. Notice is hereby given that the North Brantford Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing at 6.30 p.m. on Thursday, October 3rd, 2019 at the North Brantford Town Hall, 909 Fox and Road, North Brantford, Connecticut, to consider the following. A. Um, application 2019-12, special use permit, request to allow one dwelling unit under section 23, schedule A, line A1, in a B2 zone at 2315 Fox and Road, owner applicant Ralph Paso. Uh, B, application 2019-14, special use permit, request for a temporary special use permit to bring in fill under section 43, to level out the lot at 438 Totucket Road, owner applicant Christopher DeLongo. And C, Town of North Brantford's Draft Plan of Conservation and Development, 2019-2029. God, that's scary to say, 2029. A copy of the draft plan has been filed with the town clerk's office. Comments from the public are welcome at this meeting and or in writing prior to the meeting and can be sent to the town hall, 909 Fox and Road, North Brantford, Connecticut, 06471, attend to town planner or email to townplanner at townofnorthbrantfordct.com. At this hearing, all interested persons may appear and be heard and written communications will be received. Copies of the proposals are on file for public inspection in the Town Hall Planning Department. Harry Dulac, Chairman. Okay. Thank you. All right, so our first public hearing uh, will be for the uh, Plan of Conservation Development. We're going to review the draft plan and the comments we received. So. So, yep, Pat Gallagher from Milona and McBroom is here to go through the comments. Um, so, as you know, we've been working on this for a little over, just a little over a year. And this is the update. Every 10 years, the plan of conservation and development has to be updated. There was a plan of conservation and development subcommittee, which um, consisted of myself, the town manager, Harry, Dave Sargent from the Land Trust, and Roger Salway from the Economic Development Commission. So we all went through these comments with Pat, with the exception of some comments I'm going to pass down to you now that I just received today or um, outside of the comment, outside of when we met. If you want to just take one and yeah. pass it down. Gallagher with my little McBroom. Thanks, everybody. Uh, it's been a, a fun last 12 months putting together the plan. Uh, we did receive comments uh, over the last 65 days. The plan was referred back in June. And as uh, Carrie mentioned, the POCD subcommittee uh, went through all of the comments that were received uh, as of September 30th and is providing recommendations to you in terms of which of those comments to incorporate into the revised final plan. However, it is uh, your authority to decide which comments to ultimately include or not. So um, it's up to you. You can choose to uh, 
uh, follow the recommendations, add more, subtract some, uh, it's really up to you. So I do have some uh, stuff in the beginning just about process that I'll skip over just because I've presented that to, uh, to you all already. But moving on to page five is really where we start to get into the comments. Um, as I mentioned, you uh, referred the plan back in June to town council and Scrog and the public. Uh, we did not receive any comments from either of those bodies, but we did receive comments from town staff, uh, steering committee members, and the public. Uh, and again, the, follow, uh, the subsequent slides are just the recommended revisions to the plan. Uh, you have your, the full uh, slew of comments uh, in your packet. So anything that's not covered here, we're happy to talk about as well. So starting off with just some formatting and structural revisions on slide six, uh, adding the date of the plan uh, to the front cover, as well as the plan adoption date. Ad, uh, adding the town seal and Scrog logo to the inside cover. Scrog did provide the mapping for the projects. So we want to recognize their efforts, as well as uh, updating the uh, titles and initials of steering committee members. Adding a list of maps to the table of contents, as well as associated uh, page numbers for ease of use. And adding a one-page executive summary to the beginning of the plan. So really just improving the overall user, uh, user friendliness of the document. Moving on to chapter one. Um, one recommended revision is on page seven, the existing land use table, which is to separate out water utility land as its own category um, under open space or farm or under utility, um, and making sure that the table is consistent with the map and the rest of the text. Uh, Lake Gillard is obviously your most confusing property because it's, you know, it could be seen as open space, utility land, um, but we also didn't want to overstate the amount of open space since that property is mostly off limits to residents. Mm -hmm. Moving on to chapter two, um, one uh, recommended revision to revise the, the fourth bullet on page 13 uh, about the POCO festival to just add the date that the festival started. Uh, I think currently it reads it's in its 18th year, but since this document will be around in 2029, it will be, it'll be in its 20, 28th year by then. As well as adding a new strategy under chapter two uh, to pursue, uh, pursue rural community status through the USDA, um, which uh, Roger Salway, the economic development director has been working on and so just kind of solidifying some of the efforts that he's working on behind the scenes. Uh, moving on to chapter three, um, adding a link to the RWA recreational pass on, in the document itself. So as folks read, they can say, oh, uh, here's the link to it. Hopefully uh, get some more residents with that access to that pass. Um, updating the acreage of the New Britain Land Trust to 276 acres as provided by Dave Sargent. Um, Adding to the end of the fourth bullet on page 19 uh, that the Inland Wetlands and Water Courses um, Agency re uh, reviews the regulations on an annual basis to reflect best practices. So again, just kind of acknowledging their work that they do on a continual basis. And finally, in chapter three, revising a strategy um, about educating landowners on water quality issues to focus on impaired surface water bodies. Continuing on chapter three, um, revising the first strategy on page uh, 29 to continue the Farm River uh, water quality study, uh, could, knowing that it's ongoing. Rather than initially, it said, I think, complete, um, but we want to acknowledge that it's still not being done. Adding a new strategy about reviewing the Open Space Fund and identifying potential projects uh, that that fund could be used for in conjunction with an open space plan. Uh, revising the third strategy on page 30, uh, changing it from requiring. Uh, the use of conservation easements to implement the use of conservation easements and subdivisions. Chapter 4 on slide 11. Um, on page 39, revise objective 2 to provide quality housing for the town's workforce and senior population. That'll kind of broaden it out a little bit to encompass both price point, affordability, size, type of unit, um, kind of capturing some of the broader bullets underneath that objective. Uh, chapter 5, replacing the picture of the proposed infrastructure improvements in Northford. We showed the picture from your 2006 plan of the roundabout and new access road, and that plan hasn't gone forward, and so we thought it was best if we were to just replace that with existing conditions to not give the impression that it was kind of active and moving forward. Uh, revising the fourth bullet on page 47 about uh, adding uh, an item on site beautification in addition to landscaping for properties on Route 80. In chapter seven, uh, adding a strategy about implementing traffic calming measures where appropriate in conjunction with bike lanes. Chapter eight, replacing the aerial images uh, for the future land use categories with just a representative photograph. Uh, some folks thought the aerials were a little too confusing and difficult to read, so that should be an easy fix. 
Uh, we did receive uh, comments from the town engineer on the sewer plan uh, map, table, and text, and so we recommend incorporating his uh, recommendations verbatim, really um, changing some of the semantics around it, um, such as changing proposed sewer areas to potential sewer areas, again, to just give the impression that it's more of a hypothetical mm -hmm. build out of the sewer system rather than an active uh, plan to expand sewers. Chapter 9, um, just kind of an organizational recommendation of uh, moving the state locational guide map um, to, uh, back a page after the text that explains what the map is and what it's used for. And finally, in Chapter 10, uh, which is our, our action agenda and implementation plan, it's just several um, different uh, recommendations on adding different support entities, whether it be the Land Trust, Agricultural Commission, RWA, Parks Direct Department, etc. And so we have just some specific bullets here, uh, especially in the support category. And so just to kind of cap off, um, now that the 65-day comment is complete, um, it's ultimately up to you to uh, uh, decide which final edits get incorporated into the plan following the close of the public hearing. And when ready, uh, you can choose to adopt the plan. So I don't know how we want to handle Pat, the three other comments that came in that were not listed here. So two. Well, we did everything in our packet here. That those were all incorporated. Right, so, so I wanted to make sure, yeah, because it okay. sounded like you went through, yeah. So, those so were everything packed. in your packet, the subcommittee had gone through. So this and stuff, this, even this two pages? Yes. One? Okay. Well, no, this the one, three this that one, I just passed down to you. This one in our packet has already been gone through. Oh, the yeah, three you just passed just down read. are not included. Correct. That's okay. Sushi. So let's just take a quick look at them. Uh, so um, if we start with this intense. email from Dot Savistano. Um, uh, yep. This is... She's speaking to historical sites in town. And I think the biggest takeaway from that is that she mentions that the Reynolds Beers House is on the National Registry, but I did not see it on the website. But she she said that they, it has a plaque. Um, so I don't know if it's as easy as double checking and then, sure. Yeah, so I think this is a great one to just kind of give give us a little homework to do more research, make sure that we have, especially mm -hmm. in kind of the what we know section where we support some of the goals and themes to just make sure we have the right information and up-to-date information. I think some of this that uh, Dottie provided can supplement it. Mm -hmm. um, I think we focused on national historic districts, but it sounds like you have a lot of properties that maybe don't have official designation but are also important as well. Yeah. <coughs> but I, I think of of all of her comments, you know, she talks about the Reynolds Beers House, the um, White Angelo Fort, White Gas Station, mm -hmm. and the Miller Barn. So, like you say, Pat, you could maybe mention them mm -hmm. if the commission thinks that's appropriate, yeah. or just yeah, I didn't know about that. Mention yeah. that the those are hotel. all located at the Atwater mm -hmm. parcel. Um, she also mentioned about the event being mm -hmm. about some events taking place. I don't know if we really should include events. I agree. Um, I mean, it's, I mean, the, it's, PLCD is not something that seems to look to it for events. Um. So just to make it mm -hmm. So then the other comment letter um, dated October 1st regarding plan of conservation and development. Yeah, this first. Which one is it, Greg? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yep, the two I got page. It. I got it. Yep. The one from Steve. Stephen Nugent. Yep. So his first or second paragraph mentions that the Warren Williams house was dismantled. So that I did see on the mm -hmm. list. So that was a good catch. Yep. On his so part. we can add that for sure. Um, and I don't know how, if we just say that it was dismantled. Yeah, or relocated to Roxbury. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Would be easy enough. Okay. And I think a lot of these are, are comments. So the next paragraph he talks about a local scenic road ordinance, which was suggested in the plan. And he actually gave me a copy of a sample. So I think that's just something for me to hold okay. on to. Mm -hmm. And whenever the commission wants to move forward with it, we can look into that more. Um, he talks about preservation incentives. 
Could such criteria be adopted in tandem with the proposed historic district commission or preservation committee? I don't know if that's just kind of a comment that we can look into again. Yeah, currently you don't have either of those commissions, so. Um, well, we do have a uh, historic district in our regulations. No. We have conversion. We don't have a historic district, though. I thought, the one, I thought it was put before I got here they put it in. There's a historic um, design? Hist it's a historic historic conversion. Conversion, okay. So historic district commission is typically a separate regulatory body when residents decide to create their own local historic district. Right now there's no local historic districts in North Brantford so you don't have one of those commissions. <clears throat> and that wouldn't be something we could, that, that would be something town council would be yeah. responsible for. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so again, I don't think it's necessarily um, an yeah. edit as much as it's just, I a think, comment. a comment. Yeah, it, I it agree. Exist. Yeah, I agree. Um, subdivision having steep slopes be defined as 20% or greater. Again, that's maybe something we could look at yeah. at a later point. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, that would be a regulation. text amendment. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maintaining a verse, diverse housing stock. Again, I think he's That's making a, com a comment. Mm -hmm. yep. Same with the encouraging higher density. Mm -hmm. Any zoning right with the any zoning right changes that should be revised appropriately for our village center rather than applying to an existing zone district. But it's about zoning, right? Well, not yeah, if I it's not if it's to a center. If it's to one parcel, then it's spot zoning, but if it's to a center versus, like how we have the village have center overlay district, oh, that's what design yeah, district. Yeah, yeah. That's what yeah. Yep. Okay, got it. Again, I think this is just a comment. Mm -hmm. um, and then he has a comment also yeah. about affordable housing. comment about affordable housing housing plan yeah those mm -hmm. are comments yeah yeah comments yeah. the northford center 2006 corridor study he's talking about yeah. Yeah. kind of mm -hmm. capitalizing on the sale of the wells fargo bank property but again that's more of a comment same with the sustainability. Yep. Mm -hmm. Same with the amendment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would the encourage higher density for page eighty nine be an edit or a comment? Um, yeah, So right now that bullet reads, develop regulations that permit small-scale multifamily residential development as a component of a mixed-use development in North Brantford Center and areas south of Route 80 that are serviced by sewer and water. So that would be to add uh, Northford Center to the list as well. Yeah, yeah, I mean that, we've talked about that, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Is there sewers up there? Yes. Yeah. Can be, I mean, yeah, could, that can be attached. Mm -hmm. There's there's sewers there. I'm not sure about. Okay. We'd have to talk to Kurt to see what the capacity okay. is and who could tie oh, in. Yeah. But that would think happen during the review process yeah. anyway. But I mm -hmm. think that's a valid comment. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. for that one, mm -hmm. incorporate that. So in B two and B three into single zone. That's just a comment. Comment. Yeah. That's thorough. And then the last one we have is from Gregory, Gregory Sharp. Mm -hmm. So a lot of his comments are speaking to inland wetlands. Mm -hmm. 
uh, tasks and recommended strategies. I, I did speak with him on the phone today. Um, and I think this is really helpful. I think that he makes some good points that you know, we only have one person, myself, who's staffing wetlands and planning and zoning, and we only have a five-member wetlands agency, so realistically to do all of these things in maybe in a short period of time is challenging, but I think a lot of this happens when we actually try and tackle these yeah. objectives. So this is a plan. It's not it's a, it's a vision. It's a right. vision. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, I've only been through one of these before because mm -hmm. it gets everyone 10 years, but you take a low hanging fruit and mm -hmm. get those done first and then move on to the more challenging ones uh, and they kind of come some milestones with them. Right. I mean, that's, right. yeah. And I think it's a definitely a good point of making sure that the tasks are targeted, but I think that once we start chipping away at these, whether it's this commission or the wetlands right. agency, we'll have to narrow down the exact project yeah. once yeah, we come get up there. With realistic exactly. goals. Right. So I think it's useful comment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So our next step would be to so revise the revise the document yeah. and then yeah. we, well, so you can open it up to the public see if there's any public well, no, I'm sorry, I'm oh, yes. do that sorry. So mm -hmm. I just want to know where our next steps are is once yeah. we take so once once the public hearing closes tonight, um, you can take action to adopt the plan with the changes that you recommend tonight. So that could be, you know, the, the comments that we just talked about, as well as um, whichever of the steering committee's recommendations you wish to incorporate. So, I mean, which are all outlined in the plan, right. the mm -hmm. PowerPoint, yeah. and everything that we reviewed, including Does the, Steve. The, is the steering committee good? They don't need to see another uh, draft of it. No, okay. they didn't ask to. All right. Do we, would there be a reason to keep the public hearing open for other than tonight? No. Unless there's some outstanding comments from the, okay. All right, good. All right. Uh, since this is a public hearing on the uh, plan of conservation development, would anybody like to speak on that? Okay. So. Make a motion to close the public hearing. Yes. All right. I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing on the plans of conservation. Is there a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none. I mean, we can get back to you. I mean, you don't have to stay if you don't want to. Because <laughs> I'm sure we could just email and say, yeah, it passed, and go ahead and make the with perfect. We can change it. And I'll get you guys to revise documents for As much as we like the large audiences, <laughs> but, uh, you know. We're Thank you for your help on this. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's see. Next order of business uh, is, is this the one we want to do? Um, yes. So it's it's 12 and 14? No, it's um, application 2019-12 and 2019-15. So one's a special use and one is a site plan. Oh, okay. All right. So, I have a commission. Uh, there is a public hearing for application 2019-12, which is special use, okay? And it's for 213-15 yeah. Fox and Road. Then there's a site plan under new business with the oh. same it, with the same address. So okay. one's, a, one's a special use permit, the other one's a site plan. So being that they're both here together, uh, I'm gonna recommend that we do both together. Yeah, right. so that'll make sense. Okay. So they'll but, be- but they're, they're, We would vote on them separately. Correct. Though. So we so we would have a public hearing, close the public hearing, and then we got down to on, um, uh, action on public hearing. We would do that first, and then we would do the other application under uh, new business, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, And Perfect. there's plans that are rolled up in front of you. So I thought Two could share. Right, if you want. We'll be going front. Up here. Mm -hmm. Floor is yours. Okay. Uh, good evening. My name is Mike Bennett. I'm a professional land surveyor in the state of Connecticut and a principal with Bennett Smilus Associates, 415 Killingworth Road, Higginham, Connecticut. Uh, 
Also here with me tonight is Ralph Capasso, the property owner uh, and applicant. Um, uh, I will start out by uh, just giving you a little bit of information on the project. Mm -hmm. um, it's located on the south side of Foxen Road. Um, it contains 41,619 square feet of land. Uh, currently, uh, there's a well house septic system on the property that is somewhat in need of uh, repair. Uh, wetlands approval uh, was granted for this uh, project on July 24th, uh, 2019. Try to be loud and uh, step over here a little bit. Um, just to, if you take a look, quick look at this rendering, what we have is a proposed retail building um, here that's going to have retail and commercial space on the first floor, uh, second floor, uh, an office area to serve one of the retail areas, and a one bedroom apartment. Special permit application is for the one bedroom apartment. Um, the site will be served uh, off Foxen Road by a driveway, which is approximately on top of the existing driveway that's, that enters the property now. Uh, we are proposing a parking lot in front. Um, we have shown parking spaces uh, that we plan to use. Uh, we have a driveway and a parking area we to use that shade of gray on here. We have also shown additional parking spaces in this grass area that make the site comply with the regulations. We don't believe we need them. If once uh, use is in there and they need to be added, we would then uh, propose to add the additional parking spaces over there. But we feel that uh, based on the, the proposed use right now, that would not be necessary. Um, Can I ask you one question? Where is 230? Uh, I'm looking that up right now. I'm trying where, to. Where, where, uh, where is it on, on, on uh, Route 80? Do you yeah. look? Okay. Just. Near Hidden Kitchen? Yeah. Near Earl's? Is so it, here, is it's there an there? There's it? a house. It's, res it's a residential home right now. That's oh. Been is vacant it boarded up? Long. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. boarded up. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's just. Yeah. Um, a little west of Whitewood Lane. Right, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, this corner piece here is a vacant yeah, piece of that. land. It's the right. primarily wetland and we're the, yeah. the first house down from that intersection. Okay. It sets back from the road. Mm -hmm. And it's been vacant for quite a while. It's been right. vacant for years. It was yeah, vacant when, five years when Ralph bought it. Um, so it's this strip of land. This way. So okay. it's... <coughs> And to the right, that's a house? What's um, to the south of the property, there's a house. I don't know north <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> yeah. it's it's a, a of the north side. You're facing the property. Oh, yes. To the right. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's how my brain works. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you're facing the property from the street, yeah. this is the parcel we're talking yep. about. This is the existing house. Uh, to the right of this is another two-story house. Okay. I believe it's uh, red, if not positive. And then um, you see that there. Um, this house uh, is set uh, a little over 110 feet back from the street line, which will probably make it 130 feet back from the road. Um, right now, it's it's fairly hard to see because there's a lot of weeds and yeah. underbrush that is going up in front of it. Um, the wetlands area is in the back part of the lot, mm -hmm. and we were able to uh, obtain approval to construct the new building here. If you if you look at this site plan, uh, this is sheet three, you will see a shaded area for the new building. The shading that comprises uh, the building itself, uh, a porch on what I would call the right side. 
side of it and a deck on the back of it. Inside that shaded area, you would see the hash marks around what is currently the existing building. And when you look at that existing building, there's a garage here um, on the left side of the building that is actually outside uh, of the setback area. So it's, it's encroaching into the setbacks. All of our proposed building will now conform to the setback regulations. Um, and even a portion of, of the old house did not conform to those regulations. Um, we have uh, a proposed septic system um, design up close to the house. Uh, there's not, this, this uh, commercial building will be slab on gray. There's no basement proposed in it. We have a septic system designed here uh, in, in front of the building. Um, we have, we, there is an existing well that's going to be abandoned uh, in this area. And we are proposing a water connection going from this corner of the house to the southeast corner all the way out to the existing water main on the other side of the street. In addition to that, the parking area flows toward the street. And we have proposed in the driveway area, we proposed a trench drain in this area that would connect to a manhole. And then it, the storm drainage water would flow into a stormwater recharge area. Um, right here adjacent to the property line. It is um, an extremely tight, uh, tight site. Um, we have maintained the minimum separation permitted by code uh, between the septic system and the stormwater recharge area. Um, so it's not possible for us to close this up or remove that further away from the, the street line. Just quickly uh, looking at this plan, you will also see a proposed sign in this area. We are proposing street lights, or lights in the parking lot around the edges here. Um, there's another one up there. Um, landscaping throughout the site, uh, a sidewalks around the house and connecting to the front of the building. If you look at the, this is the front elevation of the building. Uh, it looks like a traditional cape that you might see um, throughout town. Um, uh, this will be the main part of the building. Um, this part, um, has a porch on it. Um, and then in the back of the building, you see on the rear elevation, you'll see a two story um, at, at the back portion of the building. Um, this plan does show a dumpster area that is not going to be constructed. We're not proposing that. It was shown in the architecture plan that it's not on the site plan. Um, they are going to dispose of the trash and recyclables with the, the smaller containers that can be, you know, rolled out to the road and picked up by uh, a, you know, garbage uh, contractor. Um, if you look at the floor plan of the building, uh, again, you'll see the porch here. They have a retail area. On the right side, they have another retail area on the left side. This is the first floor, a center vestibule. Uh, they have a storage area in the back, uh, restroom, another storage area, all on the first floor. Um, the first floor consists of approximately 1,464 square, uh, 
square feet of retail area, about 320 square feet of storage and toilet area, and 158 square feet of the stair vestibule. This um, stair, this is the stair that goes up to the second floor. The access door is on the side of the porch here. Um, and then if you look at the second floor, when you go up the stairs, to the right is the office space. Uh, and then to the left, you would enter the apartment unit. It's one apartment. You have a li living area. You would have the bedroom with the bathroom off the bedroom. Um, and a small kitchen area. Uh, this area would most likely serve as a dining area. Um, both the retail space and the apartment unit have rear access doors out to the, the deck in the back. On the second floor, you have uh, approximately 907 square feet as apartment, uh, 486 square feet. Uh, as the retail area and 80 uh, square feet for the uh, stair vestibule. Uh, that is here. Now, Mr. Capasso and his wife have a internet based business where they sell home goods uh, over the internet. And they intend to move that uh, business to this building and, and and use the majority of the retail space and then use the second floor office area for computers and bookkeeping and internet based um, sales. Um, they're not proposing um, a lot of uses that would bring customers in and out of the building. There's going to be very little uh, traffic and parking. Um, you know, by um, selling the home goods, I think if you were to think of IKEA, where you go, you buy a, a cabinet or a dresser or something, then you put it together. Uh, they're going to use this space to provide people the opportunity, at least in the area, to allow them to put it together and then just come and pick it up. So, so people are going to be coming more just to pick up goods and packages and, and go. It's not going to be something that's going to have a lot of uh, a lot of traffic uh, involved with it. Um, at that point. I I think I've pretty well described what I have to say, and I'll be more than happy to uh, answer any questions the commission may have. Before we do that, Carrie, do you have, uh, do you want to read any mm -hmm. uh, department comments? So I did, I'll note that I did receive the mailings, the certificate of mailings that were mailed out to the abutters, so that met the requirement, which is great. And a sign was also posted on the property. Um, I have reviews, referrals from the health department. East Shore District Health has reviewed the proposed plan to demolish the house, abandon the well, and construct a new septic system and connect to public water. The proposed uh, use, the proposal, sorry, the proposal rebuilding a retail store with a one bedroom apartment and office above. We recommend approval from Alex Sinati. Um, Chief of Police did not have any comments. Fire Marshal said a preliminary review was conducted by this office in accordance to NFPA, Connecticut General Statute, and Connecticut State Fire Safety and Fire Prevention Code. This office has no objections to the concept of this plan, Pro excuse me, the concept of this project. The following recommendations are made. A sprinkler system be required in a mixed use occupancy. Fire alarm system with CO detection is required. Dumpster enclosure must be at least 10 feet away from the building. Per town code, a Knox box system is required. 
This office would like to stress the importance of minimizing fire load conditions when possible and keeping combustibles away from heat source objects at your facility. It is the owner's responsibility to inspect and maintain full compliance with all fire safety code requirements. The zoning enforcement officer said that um, he'd prefer lighting to be full cutoff and uh, erosion and sedimentation controls and a track pad must be maintained continuously during construction. The building official said, I think this is a good use of the site. All construction must comply with the Connecticut Building Code in effect at the time of the application for mixed use occupancies. And the town engineer said there are no outstanding engineering staff comments. All issues were addressed in the Inland Wellness Review process. So on the, on the site plan, um, <coughs> when you do both together, um, lighting, do you have a, a lighting plan yet? Well, the, the architect's plan shows lighting. It shows outside uh, lighting <coughs> here, another one here, another one here, and the sign will have some lighting. Um, we did not light these future spaces if they were to be extended we would have lighting there uh, at that time and we would provide uh, for a connection probably a handhold or something out here that would allow you to extend that lighting from that point there will also be a uh, building amount of lighting uh, provided at the time that um, the uh, uh, building plans are The, the lighting? Yeah. Um, well, I think the, the fixture that they're proposing is on the plan. Um, yes. If there's any additional, then we would review that. But um, I guess the one comment from the zoning officer was just, is there an option for a full cutoff as opposed to something that shines out? Which uh, that, that fixture looks like it does shine out. Uh, yes, we can address that okay. with, with the fixtures at the time of construction or approval of the building plans. I think uh, a landscape architect selected this one because it was used someplace else in the house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, we prefer the shine straight down. Yes. Yeah. So that would <coughs> Can I get help understanding on one of the comments about the where the apartment would be falling under? The or can we address oh. that now or yes. I'm just confused because I think we addressed this with yeah. the building that was just redone next to duty. Didn't they do a one bed bedroom apartment with an office on the second floor? So we, most recently there's actually a building across the street from this, the hair salon, or it had been the hair salon where there was the apartment upstairs. Mm -hmm. And the change that you made to the, to the zoning regulations was in regards to the size of the lot because before it limited the size of the, the parcel. So you changed the regulations to allow for one unit per 10,000 square feet on one parcel. Mm -hmm. But the, the comment that I made about the, our regulations in the dwelling unit is that in our table, in the use table, a-1 says a single detached dwelling for one family and not more than one such dwelling. Mm -hmm. The challenge with this application is that it's not a detached yeah. dwelling. Mm -hmm. It's a dwelling that has retail and an office space. Yep. So it's a separate building with just one dwelling in it, but it's a dwelling unit. Mm -hmm. So then if you go to the next one down in our use table, it's A-2, which is multiple dwellings consisting of two or more mm -hmm. dwelling units. So it doesn't really fit, but then I talked with the town attorney and we came to an agreement that it seemed like A-1 is the best because it's for one unit, or it says one dwelling, mm -hmm. which this is. In, in both cases, it's permitted in the zone. Mm -hmm. The thing that's different about a B-2 zone versus a residential zone is that the dwelling has to be on the second floor, which again, this meets mm -hmm. the requirement. Mm -hmm. 
but I'm noting it really more for the commission to understand and then when we look at the zoning regs we may want to just clarify that a little bit yeah. and maybe the way to, to address it is under a-2 mm -hmm. instead of saying multiple mm -hmm. dwellings we can say one or more mm -hmm. dwelling units as opposed to yeah or multiple dwellings consisting of one or more dwelling units yeah. maybe mm -hmm. is how we change it so that was just the that yeah. was the issue and the reason why i was confused was, was like i thought we just dealt with this with so we dealt know. with the square footage of the parcel the yeah. okay not the language okay. so it's in the, in the, the existing parking spaces you do how many do you have on the plans um, currently you have 17 correct or at least yeah. Is the requirement for 17, so we just want to make sure one way or the other for 17 on that. It's one space for 100 per 150 square feet, and then for office, it's one space per 100 square feet. So that's where I think maybe I had picked up another space, another space. And the apartment requires two, so that could have been the other. But I think, regardless, there's enough space to yeah, if, if you need it. You know, there's more than enough space yeah. to put parking here and parking. Yeah, if you need it, right? If you need it. Yeah. I'm curious, there's no one here about the driveway. Is that an answer? About DOT somewhere? Oh, have you talked with DOT about? Generally, DOT doesn't want to talk to you until after right. you get local commission approval. Mm -hmm. um, but this is, you know, consistent with other projects that we've done. We already have an existing curb cut here. Right. Um, so DOT um, would widen, in, widen this a little bit uh, and we provided uh, the radiuses mm -hmm. to conform with uh, DOT uh, regulations and we also designed this as a recharge area um, and actually will be reducing, because this is a recharge area, will be reducing the post development uh, discharge into this catch basin is actually going to be uh, slightly less than the pre development discharge. So um, we don't uh, feel that there's going to be any issues with respect to, to DOT. And, and again, uh, they frown upon. Since we're doing both these together, um, so we are, you already know one space uh, what's going to go in it. So what would be those hours of operations? Probably be eleven to five or six. Okay. And then as far as the uh, apartment upstairs, will you be living in that? Yes. As well. Okay. All right. And then, what do you have any? Um, the other part that you you may rent out of uh, the other section, do you have any? Is there? Do you have any plant current plans of what you feel would be going in there? Or um, I'm not sure. I really haven't thought about that yet. And <clears throat> now, being that you're going to be living there, your business could be there. Uh, what types of hours of operations would you have on somebody coming into the, into that space? Probably the latest eight o'clock. The latest. Okay. From probably nine to eight. No later than eight, though, I know that. Okay. Anybody got anything else? Oh, 
to go over to the public if you have yeah. something else for them. So on this, this is a public hearing. So if anybody would like to speak or provide any comments on this, please uh, stand up to uh, your name and your address. And if you have any comments at all, yeah, please. How you doing? My name's uh, Ernest Bertrand. I live on 9 B Street, right behind the hair salon that used to be. Uh, one of the concerns I have is, and the reason I heard I came here tonight is I heard there was a Dunkin' Donuts going in on this parcel. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, being that said, I mean, Route 80 is a highly trafficked area to begin with. The other thing that happens is uh, I bought into this house 19 years ago, and the more businesses that go up around my house, my resale value actually goes down. That's what I'm concerned about. Future development on this parcel uh, of what they do, if they decide that they want to sell, can it become something like a Dunkin' Donuts? Uh, well, it, it would be a complete change of uh, use. But it's zone business. It's business so yes. It would it could be, but I'm just saying it, it doesn't oh, automatically. Yeah, well just like right, just yeah, it like doesn't just it, yeah, it doesn't automatically like it, yeah. you couldn't sell until you just pop up a dunk and dunk. Right. It, it doesn't site plan. Yeah, it would have yeah, to I come just, through. Yeah. yeah, I mean there there would be have to be a site plan that comes through. In in the case of a dunk and donuts, mm -hmm. it, you would probably most likely have to go through DOT because the existing driveway probably wouldn't support in and out traffic at Dunkin' Donuts would require septic. We'd have to go to East Shore for I mean, or for whatever you know for. Yep. So there would be a whole process that would have to you know to put anything yep. in there. But it, like, what, what zone is it? B two. Yes. Yep. So what's allowed in a B two? I guess. Yes. There are many right. options. Right. I'm, I'm a B two zoned also. Yeah. They would still. They, okay, they would so have to know. come through here. I mean, yeah. they wouldn't. It wouldn't be like all of a sudden. Just pop up overnight. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as long as it's nice, you know, as long as the development is something that's going to be, you know, open all hours at night and stuff like that, yeah. you know, I'd really don't have a problem with it. You know, Low impact, like, yeah. You know. Perfect. So. It is not, yeah, please. So, everybody who's watching tonight on <laughs> Facebook or be watching, it is not a Dunkin' Donuts. We have two in town. We have no proposed or even heard of a potential third one in town. Yeah, rumors. So. That's how rumors. Yeah. So we will squash that rumor tonight. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Thank you. Because yeah, <laughs> Carrie, we've been getting phone calls tomorrow morning, yeah, right. all night. Yeah. Oh, please, by all means. Now. Just your name and address, please. Yeah, I'm Jane Bertrand, Nine Beach Street, North Brantford. Um, I have a traffic concern. Route 80 is very, very bad. It's hard to get in and out. So. I don't know what you can do with this application that's going in there because you can hardly get in or out of any place there now. So that was my main concern that DOT has to do something with the traffic pattern. Yeah, that's and that's basically I mean uh, out of our hands. Uh, I mean, if, if there's town concerns. They they go up to DOT and then it's a DOTs. They'll put a, you know they may put. A, you see the wires going across the, mm -hmm. the roads, mm -hmm. do traffic, you know, some impact yeah. studies. Um, there resides in the state. I think in, in our town, there's been quite a few times that we've requested mm -hmm. DOT's assistance, and, and whether it's been at Route 80 or up by uh, yep. 1722 or wherever it's been, and it's at their discretion, unfortunately. And we do put pressure on them, but. Uh, so, you know, they do their study and if whether it conforms or not, but that is something that we also look at when we, if it was a Dunkin' Donuts, there would be a, significant, there'd be a mm -hmm. significant concern. But a low impact um, uh, project like this with limited in and out is something that we would look for on Route 8 versus, you know, some, you know, high volume retail, especially where that is. Not, there's not, you know, we're big Y is, you know, when that went in, Traffic light goes down. That makes perfect sense. Uh, and but a low pack, a low impact area like that, limited traffic, would DOT wouldn't probably. I mean, they would they would probably. Rec I mean, they will recommend that when you do go to them. But uh, yeah, we, we 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 understand that. Yeah, all the, this, the all driveway coming. Route 80. We know you know. Uh, the driveway is coming out across the street on Route 80. They're hard to get in and out of for exactly. people. You yep. can't get in or out anywhere anyhow. Yep. Well, Dunkin' Donuts would have been a, a big traffic thing. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Amongst other things. Yeah. Amongst other things. I have no idea. Anybody else? Anybody in the commission? 
I'm just curious where the Dunkin' Donuts rumor started. <laughs> Starbucks started it. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. So do we it's have a hair question. question. So um, wait, wait, yes. yeah. um oh, okay. on the grade here, what's the, the pitch from the road to your drainage for uh, reclaiming the water there? Is it pitched so it's almost a V going down so the property is pitched to it and then the road's pitched to it? Yeah, basically the the way this parking lot is trying to get it it's designed so that these parking lots are sloped to this curve line here and these parking spaces would be sloped to this curve line here so the drainage would essentially flow down this curve line and then you have this trench intercept the drain that actually is mm -hmm. great that goes all the way across the total of the driveway here yeah. so that this is going to accept all the drainage. And that can handle so if we had a heavy rain or anything rain. like that. Yeah. It was designed we provided the town engineers with uh, calculations that uh, showed the uh, drainage computations from two year storing to 100 years storing. Yes. And I do want to just make one comment with respect to D and D. This, you know, is a pretty tight site, and the septic system in here uh, is not big enough to support a food service establishment. Uh, and also the separation distances we have to have, you know, from the septic system to the stormwater recharge system, um, there's no additional play there to make the septic system bigger. So um, it's going to be a very low yeah. impact. Yep. Are we up? Are we good? Anybody else for the public like to speak? Thank you for your comments tonight. I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing. I make a motion to close the public hearing for, is it both applications or just one? No, that, just the one. because the other Just the started. special use permit. Yeah. Okay, so I make a motion to close the public hearing for application 2019-12 special use permit uh, to allow the one dwelling unit. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Seeing none, that passes 4-0. Okay. All right, uh, next one is a application 2019-14 special use permit for a temporary, uh, to bring fill under section 43, 40, 438 to Tucker Road. So we, the property owner is here, this is a three lot subdivision approved off of Totucket Road. It's under construction. Two of the lots are under construction. And um, this application is for a temporary special use permit to bring in fill on uh, the property. So. Hi, I'm Chris Dolan. I'm the owner of that property. I, uh, my only reason for bringing the fill in is it's now, it's pretty steep hill. I just, I need a gradual slope. I got, my kids live there. I just, just want it safe. And that's really all I'm looking to do. The septic down the bottom of the hill, I just, it's gonna cover it with a couple feet and then just be a gradual slope around the property. But I guess it's too much fill to just do, so I need the permit. So, right, so in the regulations it exceeded the permitted amount um, that's allowed just as part of construction. So this was in well and beyond. So, um, I well, um, so, I'm, I'm not, so you, there's three properties, and I, I know where they are. So there's one, two, and three. Yeah. Are you do Are you doing it across the board, or all in the front, or is it just for one of those? Just for one. Just one up in the back. It's up. Oh, up, okay. There's yep, two yep, up yep. in the back, yep. and there's one on the street. It's one up in the back. Okay. So the amount where it's over 2,000 cubic yards of material. Correct. Right. I'm not yeah. sure. We're not sure exactly, yeah. but you know, approximately. Um, do you have any comments? I'm sorry, what is fill? It's just dirt, right? Just dirt, yes. right. So the property Gravel. before it was subdivided and 
you know, obviously before they started building on it, was very sloped. Correct. In a multitude of directions. Yes. It was challenging, I'm sure, to build on. I don't think there was much ledge, if any, but it was just like at an angle. So in order to make it level, to be able to drive in off of Totucket Road, they had to bring in a lot of dirt. Dirt, so, so gravel. Okay. Um, the waste. That's not like medical waste. Sure. Again, I don't have so, to um, one of the comments is, I noticed on the plan that it's near, it's within the 100 foot wetland review area. So if there's any way to not disturb anything within the 100 foot wetland review area, but I don't know if that's possible. I mean, I can move it back as close to pot as possible. I mean, my septic tank is up there. Yes, your septic, I think, is outside of it the is outside foot it. Upland but review area. on the, you know, but where the septic ends, yes, it, it would be almost a straight drop off. Yeah, well, and you can grade it in there, but I would say, I know this is another step, but just to have the a wetlands mm -hmm. application, <laughs> okay, I hate to say it, but it's just it's within that review area. Um, and you want to grade it so that you can live with it. You Not know? yeah, I don't have to cut it. It could be wild right. flowers. It could just it just right. so my kids just don't fall off. But just to go through the the process because there is a wetlands um, there. And um, regarding East Shore Health, so I did refer to them, and they have a comment that they reviewed the proposal to fill, regrade the front and side yard. We have reviewed this with the engineering firm Waldo and Associates and recommend approval. As long as the engineering firm oversees the regrading and should any fill be used in the construction of the septic system, it must be select fill and also the maximum depth of the bottom of the leaching system below finished grade is eight feet. Correct. That's why. Okay. So we we already walked through with the house. Oh, department. perfect. Okay, yeah. good. Be sure health. So if we have to do what? Could we? Could we? We don't have to wait for. We could do what we need to do, right? Or do we have to wait? <coughs> or make it a condition? No. If wetlands approves it. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. Carrie, where are the wetlands on this? <laughs> so if you look at, you can come over here. So here's the wetlands. And Chris, feel free to yeah. come up just to. So, so Totaki Road's here. Yeah. So here are the wetland flags. Yeah. So then this is a 100 foot review. And then they're proposing to regrade. Into a here, yeah. So this is gonna be the regrade, right? Or like through here? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it may even be something that I can I can review as the duly authorized agent, um, because I know that you're in process and we don't want to hold it up. Right. Um, yeah, so the longer this is delayed here, and right. there's no cover on it, then exactly. you're just going to get constant erosion going, right. even if you have a cement barrier. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yep. 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 And Ron Walters is here from the Regional Water Authority. So do we want to, I mean, do we want to just, I mean, it doesn't matter how I'm going to say it. We're fair being done. Mm -hmm. I know. It doesn't matter if we approve it at this point. We just do it. We want to take a look at it. Mm -hmm. And then just approve it for the next meeting. Yes. I think that's what we should do. I mean, Remy, it's, I think, I mean, I it's think already in progress. Right. So, so what we're trying to do is just trying to make it so if we expedite it, but we also make sure that we... Procedurally, we yeah. need to do wetlands yeah. first. Before Whatever I got to do. Yeah. Whatever yeah. I got to do. So I think, yes, I would agree. I think that it should be continued. Yep, yeah, you yeah. can close public hearing and continue it. I'll work with him to just do the duly authorized agent. So that would just be another application? Then. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, that's all right. I I, whatever I gotta do, I just. Um, yeah. <laughs> but just, just to keep it moving, and but it's better in the long run for you just to go through right. the steps. Because down the road, someone's like, I have a problem. And right. Yeah. Yeah. So the other question that we had just while we we're talking about it is there's the property that's below this, right. yeah. there's the White House, and when looking at the property, um, there's like a dirt road that goes through there that hadn't been there, that's at like the toe of this slope. Where does that go, and was that 
Is it next to the White House, the little yes. White House? Yes, I can show you a picture. So I don't know if it's just some them getting in there to work on. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, I mean, they've been going okay. in from the bottom because the slope is too steep to get down there from the top. Right. Yeah, so they go up there through to okay. get to the bottom of the hill. Okay. And then what's the plan for that when you're done with the work? That's good. For that. I, because I think, I don't know where the wetlands are there, but it must be right there. So I would think. So I think it's behind it, okay. where that is. Okay. Okay. But you're not gonna use that road for anything going no. after this stuff. No, it's just okay. gonna be yeah. done okay. after they're done right. working. Once the slopes are not there, yep. they will never go in there. Okay. Okay. Closing the public hearing. Uh, yeah, well, I gotta see if anybody in the public wants to speak. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. but, uh, do you have any questions or anything? Are you good with that? No, my thing is just, you know, we have processes and procedures okay. in place. As long as those are followed, but yeah. striking the balance of following them with supporting, yeah. I'm good. Anybody from the public to speak? <laughs> Ron Walters, Senior Environmental Analyst with the Regional Water Authority. Um, I should have revised the letter that I submitted. Um, I think it stated that we would like to see the erosion controls installed before the uh, special permit is issued. And we had some discussions uh, in the office and considering it's October, I think, as everybody said, I think it would be important to expedite the special permit to get this site uh, stabilized as soon as possible before winter is. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where our thinking is now that we would, you know, uh, I think there's been a goodwill gesture of getting the erosion controls in this weekend, which is very positive for mm -hmm. us. Um, so I think that shows that the applicant knows the, you know, the situation out there. And I think from everybody here thinking that, you know, I think it's important that the special permit for the additional fill be put in, uh, be approved tonight so that you could move forward on getting the site to the final grade and stabilize. Okay. How much more material do you have to bring in? It's, it's not a lot left. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, I don't know how much yeah. exactly, but. You think a few more truckloads, 10 truckloads? Yeah, probably 10, 20 truckloads, I'd say. So the commission Maybe. meets again in two weeks. Um, so we meet again on the 15th, 17th. Um, so this is continued, but they continue to stabilize. I mean, I'll come to next Thursday if they need to. <sighs> I don't think we have one well, As long as they don't mind possibly my children. No, we would, come in, I'll come in. we would come in for one thing. Yeah. Like for five minutes. Or I don't want to say for five minutes, but for now. I'm going to make now, Harry, that'd be unconditional that Carrie's able to do the other aspects yeah, by then. I'm going to ask well. what's next. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I mean, would you be willing to come in? Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. Well, can we do that? I mean, continue to have a special meeting next Thursday? Or, Harry, is, is it the or do another you option is approve it on condition that that's met and then don't have to because it's just make sure you get okay crush your teeth out your eyes on the other aspect and then it's yeah, yeah. we shouldn't we shouldn't approve it until so the other party until the other part until the other party okay. even if even a condition i don't think i mean they don't like right it. Don't yeah i mean, mean wetlands like technically it's that. supposed to be at the same time or yeah. before okay yeah planning and zoning is it a meeting where like it has to be later in order for people to come or we can do it no because we're gonna close the public hearing i mean my right my so kids are covered to. until like 4 30 so i can do something oh you're saying like have an earlier yeah right meeting during the are, day are we allowed to do that or that's yeah, yeah. Be a special meeting regardless of yeah. when we have it so if we do it at four and then i can still get my daughter out of school by four thirty. to be I, I, can't, I'm, I can't do earlier Oh. Rock, can you make it on Thursday? No, no, I'm just saying anytime Thursday. If you can make it Thursday night? I'm not sure. Okay. Only in so far as 
I got stuff going on in Boston I that you. I might be pulled out of state right now. Um, I could do work one time. I could do that. I could. Yeah, I could. If, if I have to, I'll just bring my kids. And yeah. It's quick. Money. Hopefully, they'll. You can ask them about you. Yeah. Makes sense. Yep, that's yeah. fine. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. I guess so. Yep. Yeah. So we'll, we'll 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 move the meeting up till next week. And then we'll still have our regular meeting in yeah. two Thursdays. Yeah. Yeah. Could we do Wednesday night? Huh? Could we do Wednesday night? Uh, Trish, Wednesday better for you? Um, as long as it's quick. Um, as long as it's quick, that's fine if my kids come. Yeah. Quick we could do Wednesday. Okay. That would be better. All right. Yeah. Okay. See if Bill okay. can come. And Ron and if when Ron and Bill get back, Trish, you may not. You know, if, 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 you know, yeah. We just need three. Yep. So. Since it's pretty much a, we know what's going on. Well, here, yeah. I need a motion to close the public hearing though for tonight. Yeah, so I just want to make sure before we do, we're good. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead. I'll make a motion to close the, the public hearing on application 2019-14 special use permit. Is there a second? I second. Um, any, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Seeing none. That passes four to zero. So what we'll do is um, we will uh, bring this under new um, uh, new business or uh, actionable on next Wednesday, mm -hmm. which nine. is um, October 9th at, you want to just do 6.30? Sure. You want to do 6.30, 6 o'clock? Or earlier to get out. I'm yeah. indifferent. People want we'll to just, do earlier to get out of the way. Let's just do, want to do it six. Good. Well, Alex, if you can make, what's the earliest you what's, can make? What's it? the earliest you can make? I can do six. All right, let's do it six. So it'll be Wednesday, October 9th at 6 p.m. right here. All right, we're all set for now. Yep, thank you. All right. Okay, thank you. All right, next uh, order of business is our, our text amendment. We, it was continued from the last meeting, 2019-7. Uh, it's our... Um, Black coverage for non conforming bonds. Or, um, so, I had outlined some different options. We had talked about them at the last meeting as well. So, again, this is looking at amending the zoning regulation to possibly increase the coverage that would be permitted in the residential, the R40 zone. Currently it's 10%. The question was to possibly increase it to 15% across the entire zone, regardless of the size of the parcels. Another option is to increase the coverage to 15%, but only for lots that are non-conforming, so if they're less than 40,000 square feet. so. And that would be for all parcels. So anything, because there are some parcels that are in the R40 zone that are more than 40,000 square feet. So this would only be for those less than 40,000. Another option is to, again, only focus on the non-conforming parcels that are less than 40,000 square feet, but specifically, focusing on parcels that are 30,000 square feet and less. Um, and then another option is to only focus on the parcels that are 20,000 square feet or less. Or there's, you know, there's kind of endless options. Then another possibility is to focus on non-conforming lots that are 30,000 square feet, but those are maybe only 12% of the lot, but the lots that are 20,000 square feet and less, so the smallest of the lots, maybe those can go up to 15%, but as you get larger and you become more conforming, then the coverage gets closer to 10%, which is what it is today. But I just caution you, you I don't think we want to make it too complicated because... Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Can what drug this again? Enforce. What were the properties did that, that did drug? Did that conform to lots? They, they, they they built before the regs. Size. Yeah, so they're less than an acre. Less than an acre. Built before our regs, and they want to expand, but they can't. Could right, right. Correct. Correct. Carrie, did we explore the option? Is is this the the scaling possible um, that we're trying to do? Maybe less meeting on if you fall on this requirement or. If you're this size, then you have this uh, amount to expand this size to go up gearing from 10% to 15%. Is right, so this table was, um, I think Harry requested this just to maybe get a feel for the size of the parcel, both in acreage and square feet, and then what 10% looks like and what 15% looks like. So just to show you what, where the issue lies, if I own a parcel that's 0.22 tenths of an acre, of an acre or 10,000 square feet, right now under the regs, I can only build, I can only have coverage of the parcel of 1,000 square feet. But maybe I'm next to someone who has a conforming lot, meaning their parcel is 40,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. They can build 4,000 square feet. They can cover 4,000 square feet of that parcel. So they have no issue when you want to build a garage or a porch or add-on, but if my house, my parcel is only a quarter of an acre, if I want to add a garage or a deck, I automatically need a, a variance. So current is 10% of the lot, right? Yes. And so we're the 15% of the lot is what we're proposing to go up to? Yes. See, the thing is, well, there's a couple of things here. The, the lots there are up to like close to an acre. I mean, the, they're going from 4,000 to 6,000. I don't think that's, I mean, now we're starting to get a, to increase those lots more than. That's a lot. Yeah. If you, and if but you go, so right now, if somebody has a 40,000 square foot, uh, they have uh, 0.91 acres. They can they can build up to forty four thousand square feet. Yes, footprint. Total footprint. Yes, that's that's of a building that doesn't include. Remember, there's the thirty percent calculation, which we're not yep. proposing to change, which is storage, building, yeah. and pavement. So that's still in regards to the Overall. stormwater Overall. and water quality. That thirty percent's not yeah. changing. Right. So if I take up. Um, well, if there's thirty percent, they can only they can only go up to about thirty thousand square feet. I have a oh no, I'm sorry. I have a dumb question. Thirty percent? No, okay. they can only go up to. It would be twelve thousand. Right. If you're talking about a yeah. forty thousand square foot. Yep. Dumb question. Would are we? So a parcel size that's point nine one eight acres. Are we saying that that's less than an acre? Or no, that that is an acre. No, like how detailed it's is less so? Than so our zoning, we always say oh. it's it's R forty, which stands for the forty thousand square feet. An acre is actually forty one thousand five hundred and sixty. Oh, okay, so that's an acre. That's an acre, but we always just generally say acre zoning, even though it's forty. It's just rounded down to forty thousand. But our zoning is forty thousand is a conforming lot. So, but most of what drove this was that those in the. R40 are not necessarily 40,000 feet, right? They're smaller. Right. It, it varies, honestly, depending on the neighborhood. Because like my question, my, and what I'm wondering is how many non-conforming, legit 40,000 parcels are there? I can't imagine there's many non-conforming 40,000. There's, there's pockets. So I would rather stick with what drove this, the smaller. So there's, right, there's pockets. So if you look at parcels, other yeah. zoning map, and, but if you, in North Brantford, south of Route 80, like Sunset, Arthur, Edward, mm -hmm. those roads, those are all small, small lots. If you go down Notch Hill, Frederick Street, those are all small lots. Even on, off of 139, those are small. Um, maybe some of like Sea Hill neighborhood. If you go up in Northford, um, you know some of the older developments. Um, 
even off of 22, some of those parcels like Venta. I would rather stick with what drove this concern instead well, of biting off more than we could. Well, no, is that, uh, there were, there were. In, there in were that, bigger? In, yeah, the, yeah, the, 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 the point nine one eight. I mean, there were, there were some that were, they were up there. I would go with them. See, see the court, the thing, the, majority the thing that I'm, I was trying to work, when I was working on trying to do it like a tier type thing, it's really difficult to do that because what happens is if, if, if I'm at 0. 0.5 acres yeah. and somebody's at 0. 0.6 acres, we say, okay, 0. 0.5 and below. So the 0. 0.5 and below, the person can go up to 32.67, but the person that's at, um, at 0. 0.6 can go to 26.13. So it's, yeah, it's like you know, so, it's, I mean, so doing a tier is, is going to be really, really difficult mm -hmm. because what's going to happen is we're going to set, we would do a tier. And then somebody's going to come and say, well, that's kind of unfair for me, yeah. so I want you to re redo the regulation. So, I mean, yeah, I, that's I what I'm that trying happening. to avoid is what right. can we decide to take a smaller bite and support a smaller portion of this? And if there's a need in the future, that then that majority of people would come in? And, like, what's the majority, that original data sheet what was the it, it was all it was it's from it was from point one to all the way to but point what was eight. like the majority the so around the, the quarter but there's so i'll just read through them real quick because there's not that many lot coverage variance for a lot that's half of an acre so they requested 12 percent coverage a lot that is 0.4 so they requested 12 and a half 0. 0.4, 6, 0. 0.25, 0. 0.28, 0. 0.47, 0. 0.46, 0. 0.46, 0. 0.47, 0. 0.46, 0. 0.46, 0. 0.21, 0. 0.52, 0. 0.40, 0. 0.48, 0. 0.49, 0. 0.48, 0.49, 0.50, 0.48, 0.49, 0.49, 0.49, 0.49, 0.49, 0.49, 0.49, 0.49, 0.49, 0.49, 0.49, 0.49, 0.49, 0.49,
getting an advantage that he's not. Would the but then he'll get an advantage because for somebody who has an acre who can only use can only be at 41 uh, 4100 square feet this person's going to have 6000 square feet so there's no advantage of it so you would actually want a smaller lot so you can put so you can have a bigger footprint right but i already have the larger property yeah, but only, you know, by, but only and, but and the thing is you're making but only by a tenth of an acre right but now but you're, but you're, you're changing it. you're changing the regulations to uh, the advantage of the small property owner. There's no advantage. There is well, when it comes to taxes. Well, I'm not, uh, well, there's no advantage. There's no advantage for somebody who has a small lot compared to somebody who has a big lot. So if somebody has a big lot <coughs> with 4,000 square foot uh, footprint, and somebody who has just a hair smaller lot can go up to 6,000 square feet, that's a huge advantage for a non conforming. I think that's going way, because then all of a sudden, then, then the regular somebody who has an R forty that has an acre is going to come and say, "Well, wait a minute. If I was smaller, I could build. A, I can have a bigger footprint." So that's what I'm saying. We're we're closing as we go up higher. We're closing in where somebody on a smaller lot can be actually have a bigger foot bigger footprint. Yeah. That's not that's a, that's not necessarily fair, and that's not. Yeah. Why does that person get a uh, bigger footprint? I want a f bigger footprint too. Well, he has a bigger footprint because he has a large. He, he's not. Gonna, he, he doesn't have a bigger footprint. He, if you're, if his is ten percent smaller. Yeah. It's 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 only. But he can go up to. He can go up to. Um, he, this, the first one, the small one, is going to have a larger footprint. It, if you put this across the board. Right. But he paid more for his pro The guy with the larger lot paid more for his property for the purpose of adhering to the law. Right. So the regulation. Can, the regulation so right. he can add on. These people right. didn't they, these people didn't have the regulation to adhere to because it was it's an act of So they didn't have a choice. Zoning came in what, fifty years ago? This, the, these lots are all non conforming, so these are probably right. after the, these are Right. Next generation, right? <coughs> but they paid less. Well, I, 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 I'm not going to get into who paid more or less for a property. Uh, you, but somebody who bought then, it, but then, then we're not. Then no, I'm but not somebody who bought a property in 1954 and 1950 paid obviously a, a heck of a lot right. less than somebody that okay. purchased a lot last week, you know, or in the last year. I'm just saying yeah. that we, if if we make if if we approach the larger number. Then that means that those folks can put, have a larger footprint than somebody that's in a conforming lot. That's all I'm saying. But their lots are conforming. Yeah, but they're not six thousand square feet, which they, these people who can be now. So Harry, what do you propose the cutoff to be? I kind of like Trisha's thing. You know, if, if Carrie read them off, most of them are 0.5 or less. So maybe we go to 0.5 or less. And one of the things that strike, you know, a little bit striking was that not striking, but um, know the request for, for was 12 percent and 12 and a half percent well maybe we, we dial 15 percent down to 12 and a half percent well there right. was a 16 there was a 17 oh that's we came with 15 okay well we could do 15, yeah. if we do 15 so but then i mean there are some points here so if we, we have to be careful because if somebody if we did 0.5 or less and let's in, in, and mm -hmm. we went to 15 percent so that means if you have a half an acre it would go to 32.67 but somebody at point six is still at twenty six thirteen. That's the problem I'm having with this whole thing. So, if we do point five, and you do it, so it's twelve and a half. Yep. Then couldn't those people that are in that now that gray area between point five <coughs> and one go to for yep. a variance yep. because it's only twelve and a half percent. It's not going to be as big of a difference. So then, if most of that's taken care of, mm -hmm. then those few outliers might be able to be taken care of by the variance. The variance. Yeah. Well, and with the variance, remember they have to show the hardship. Right. Like they yeah. have to show legitimately, like that yeah. they're on a smaller parcel that's not conforming, or their slopes very steep, or you know, and they yeah. whatever they're limited and. 
there's some the people with the larger yeah. lots seem I mean I think there was one in there that was big. Yeah. I can't remember how big it was. Could have requested Harry, one of your concerns were including sheds on building coverage? Yeah, that would have you'd have to fix that in the text amendment. So it's not completely separate. Yeah, so I mean my thought was if you have and I, I mean I'm just gonna throw it out there, a ten by twenty, two hundred square foot, yeah. place to put your lawnmower snow blower. I have a problem count and if it's a temporary structure too. So I don't I mean yeah. I don't you know it's like a place down on Yeah, it's it's on like cinder blocks you can go pick it up yeah, whatever or whatnot. Be. Maybe there's something we can do with that so then somebody can have a, actually have a shed and then you know, then add if they want to add four four hundred square feet onto their house, they don't have to say, Well, I gotta take down my shed to do that. And all these again, the data that drove this, they were all non-conforming lots? Less than an acre. Uh, right. I mean, I would like to stick to the non-conforming, because. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, this this here, yeah, yeah. If so you had a, more than an acre, and they wanted, they got a hardship for it. I mean, we but that was it. built during conforming, yeah, yeah no. Yeah, we shouldn't, we shouldn't. Because option A would be for yeah. everyone, even conforming. Yeah. Right, none of these were conforming. Yeah, yeah so I, want, I definitely want to stick with not no, Ron, but I understand completely what you're saying because it's, yeah. I, I don't, be honest with you, I, I'm i still in favor of option A. It's either fair for everyone in North Brantford, not a select few. You know, you're going down a slippery slope with this. But then you're allowing people who own, who own, you know, 80,000 acres can build a huge, huge, huge. As long as it conforms to the 30, 20 percent, everything else, they could just build a huge house. Somebody owns somebody owns 80, 80 acres can build a hotel. Yeah, no, we don't want to go with. Look, I'm just saying a hotel is a business. Well, no, no, no hotel. I meant, I meant a, a very, Close very here. large house. Well, and what is wrong with that? If I have the property well, and I have the money, God bless them. Then you should so change. The other, you, but I, you, you, we should change the whole regulation then. This only came up because there's people who are not conforming. Yeah, that's they, no, not this, they has a, if there's if there's somebody who has who's on an acre or more and wants to go larger, they can they can follow the same process as all these people have. But the reason why we're looking to change it is because it's gone to ZBA on a number of occasions and they've granted a variance each time. So instead of having that process, having them go to them each time, we should try to minimize it by doing something here. Now, we don't have to do anything. We can just leave it the way it is and say, you know what, let ZBA do it. All we're doing is trying to help the process. So the people who have conforming lots of an uh, acre or more, if, if they were continuously going to ZBA to get you know increases, we would consider, I would consider, we can have that conversation, but these are only not conforming lots less than an acre. But so there's, there's a difference though, because are you, like, and this is where it is, can get very black and white. When you say less than an acre, you're, do you literally mean less than 40,000 square feet? Or are you talking about have it drawing a line oh. and saying, like, less, like, and, and this is the other question. Do you want to, we have to decide on a number. Right. Are you saying less than 21,780 square feet, which is a half of an acre? Well, that's what or do you want to say less than 20,000 square feet? Well, I mean, Which is more more limiting. We'll do. We'll, I mean, that, that's the man right now. But that's what Trish is recommending. Because yep. again, but this was all came about because of that data. Yes. So let's try to have that guide us versus. And I mean, we could. I mean, I, 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 when it comes like to the 13, exact number, where we land, I would go upon your recommendation, whatever you thought we, would where the number should land, whether it's a half acre, or right. hair under, whatever would be the easiest one to identify. Okay, how do, we, how, how do we handle properties that are plus or minus? 0.1, happens often. Yes. So you should, I'll tell you how I would handle it. I would ask them, do you have something on your property that you don't need anymore? Like a shed or? No, but a lot, a lot of the old deeds are, you know, um, oh, you know this property line is a oh, thousand plus or minus a thousand yeah, feet. Yeah, I know. So well, that you could have, yeah, no, that you, know, you know, 
a half an acre going back and forth. It's 200 square feet. What kind of building is that? Well, if somebody wants if, if somebody wants to fall under the regulation, they have to prove that it's 0.5. Yeah. And if if, it, if they can't prove it's 0.5, if they if you know whatever, they can go to ZBA. I mean, I mean ZBA, Z, ZBA. No matter what we do, somebody can go to ZBA. Yeah. Even doing this, somebody can. Somebody's go to ZBA. Help. Do we want to drop it down to like 13 percent? Because I agree well, with the 0. 0.6. All of a sudden, now at 15 percent, a 0. 0.5 could have. 3,200, but 0.6 could have 2,600. If we drop down to 13%, a 0.5 will go to 2,800, while the 0.6 still has 2,600. Or we could just let ZBA continue to do it. Or we could just let I ZBA mean, I mean, if, that, if, this, if, it's, if it's, you know. But, I mean, technically, so ZBA is granting them or is not? As long as they can show a hardship. Yeah, like, technically, based on the law, hardship is impossible to prove. Well, I mean, hardship is, we, you know, we expand our family. We don't want to move. We just want to, I, mean, I, I mean, I don't that's know. Not that's not a hardship. That's not a hardship. I don't, I don't know what they're, what they're. They're supposed to say no because they're supposed to uphold our regs. Yeah. Right. So I, I am in support of helping those non-conforming lots. So you know, people that especially have families and want to stay there but can't afford a bigger home, yeah. you know, can still stay there um, in a comfortable setting. So I, I am in in support of it. I say let's take little baby steps because if all of a sudden ZBA is now getting all these other requests for non-conforming, you know, we could readjust it. But I say take a baby step based on the data we currently have. So maybe 0.5 and less at 13% versus 15%. Do you want me to draft something? I'll add in another column of 13% so you can take a look at that. There's yeah. no rush for this. Because so the, the majority of the... In Percentages were like 12 and 12 and a half. I know there was a 17, but those are like outliers. Yes. So I rather go with where the cluster is. Yes. It's 12 and 12 and a half, right? Yep. There's 13 and there's 13.7, 13.4, 13, even. I, I say 13.3. Go with 13. Lucky number 13. Or if anybody has superstition, what do you think of 12? That's a big sigh. Well, because I mean, I, I mean, I, I, you might be saying the same way I am. Is because if, at a half acre, somebody can go to thirty-two sixty-seven, where it's only a point six yeah. is only twenty-six. But that's why I say let's drop yeah. the percentage from fifteen. Well, just drop it. If you drop it, yeah. the only way to do it, and I don't want to get into physics, but you, you need a curve. So, or you need an inverted curve. Get a statistician curve. in here. Yeah. Well, you need you need an inverted curve. So, and so it would it would help what Ron was saying. Somebody have point nine. Can only go up. Can maybe go up like maybe two percent, you know, or you know, two percent more, and or let's see, no, it would be go up. So it could be a, a parabolic, I think. So two percent, and then as you go up, it, you know, front as the acreage got less, you would be allowed slightly more percentage-wise. Let the data lead us. Yeah. Majority of who yeah. requested it, the sizes and the percentages, yeah. and take a baby step at it to support it, and then let ZBA handle. Everything else? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, let's expand the, the table and okay. take a look at it. But yeah. that's, okay. that's, Ron's got an excellent point. So, I mean, and then with the numbers, yeah. like, you, you, I think it may need, yeah, you know, we can, we can get that. Uh, we need to revisit this. Yeah. I think, I know a couple of uh, guys in mathematicians at Yale, some scholars. I will see if they can send over a formula we can use. <laughs> you plug in <laughs> a couple things. But there, I, I've known a couple of families yeah. that like they they they're looking to move because they want they like the house they have over there, but they can't make it bigger. But they want to stay in town, but they might necessarily afford afford a bigger house in town. Eric, right. separate of this, I guess. When we get to other business, do you want to bring up your shed tax amendment or? Oh no, no, that we haven't. Uh, I mean, uh, oh well, we can if we want to put something. Maybe yeah, we maybe do start that. something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, we can have those quick discussion. But and yeah. maybe, do you have that um, that data in an Excel file? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to email it to us or make mm -hmm. printouts of the data sorted by first, like the lot size. That way, we can see the majority, and then sort the data by um, percent. percent requested. Yep. Again, if you send it to us and we can sort it ourselves, I mean, I'm just curious at where the right. the cluster is. I say we just go with the cluster and let ZBA deal with the rest. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So moving on. So continue. 
Yep, so we'll continue application 2019-7 to our next meeting, which is um, Thursday, October 17th. Well, does anyone from the public want to speak oh, on it? You no, didn't no. do your statement. No. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to skip possible action for that, and we are going to do... Um, POCD? Uh, no. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A, 5A? Yes. Do you have any motion? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I was reading the wrong thing. Okay. All right. This is for the POCD. So I want to read that. Okay. Right. Carrie, this is also in addition to the revisions that uh, Patrick just made tonight. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. I make motion that the Planning Zoning Commission adopt as amended and finalized on October 3rd, 2019, the document entitled Town North Frankfurt Plan Conservation Development 2019-2029, uh, effective October 18th, 2019, based on the following actions taken by the Planning Zoning Commission's Commission. In accordance with Connecticut General Statute Section 823, the Planning Zoning Commission has prepared a plans Plan of Conservation and Development POCD for a Town of North Frankfurt, and in the preceding 13 months, the Planning Zoning Commission conducted surveys, workshops, scoping, se um, scoping sessions for the purpose of soliciting input and ideas from various town boards, commissions, department administra administrators, and the general public, and it has fully considered such input in drafting the document. And in accordance with the state statute, the Planning and Zoning Commission referred the draft POCD to North Frankfurt Town Council and South Central Regional Council of Governments for review and comment and the Planning and Zoning Commission conducted a formal public hearing on October 3rd, 2019 to receive comments from the Town Council, Municipal Boards, <coughs> Commissions, and the general public and has fully considered feedback and comments in preparing the final document and in advance of holding the public hearing. Planning Zoning Commission, in accordance to the Connecticut General Statute, Section 823, posted a copy of the draft POCD on the town's website and placed a hard copy of the town clerk at both town libraries and pursuant to state statute statutory procedures. The Plan Planning Zoning Commission has given full consideration to the state of Connecticut's current plan, plan of conservation and development. Second. Okay. Uh, any discussion? Mm -hmm. All right. So this is a public hearing. This is a public hearing. Um, so to state your reasons, and we'll start off with Alex. Um, I vote yes. Uh, we've gone through a long process on this plans of conservation and development, uh, looking at the previous one working out with the various uh, department heads, uh, the public, um, and looking for the next 10 years, I feel that we are on track with what the town currently is going through and the guidelines of what we wish to see in the, the next 10 years. I vote yes, um, and I'm in support because it was a thorough process. Um, you know, it seems like there was um, a lot of input and support from the public. You know, even I was impressed today with the, the comments of people even reading it and making comments and, you know, finding some, you know, state legitimate edits that needed to be made. So it seems pretty reflective of the public and, you know, the direction we want to move in. Ryan? I vote yes for all the uh, reasons stated. And I, too, agree that, you know, there were a lot of meetings and a lot of uh, public input, and I think we did a pretty good job. Yeah, I, I agree. And um, uh, uh, we spent a lot of time on it. Mm -hmm. I think there was a lot of effort and a lot of input. The survey mm -hmm. was a huge success mm -hmm. compared to other communities that. Uh, <laughs> M and M. Um, yeah. yeah. So I mean, but they from the input we got back from them that our survey, uh, you know, we did multiple surveys, 
and so we had a hit rate that was uh, much better than what was expected. Um, the couple of uh, times that we had the open forums uh, with folks showing up, uh, so I consider this one uh, very successful. So mm -hmm. we have a you know a good deal of input, and it was well put together. So I vote aye on that, and then so we that passes four to zero. Excellent. Thank you all. Yeah. All right, next one is application 2019-12. Do mm -hmm. you have a draft on that? Mm -hmm. Or did I take that? Wait, is this the one with two of them? Yes, yep, you have right. it. So, whoever reads this one, the special conditions, and that's for the site plan. So, you don't know, I wrote this, we, we don't have, there's no special conditions for this, so just ignore that, that 22 and 23. Mm -hmm. um, I make a motion to approve planning and zoning application 2019-12, special use permit request under section 23, schedule A, line A1, to allow one dwelling unit at 2315 Foxen Road, Map 41, lot 68, B2 zone, owner, applicant, Ralph Capasso, as described in the submitted application and shown on the following maps and drawings. Completed by Bennett and Smilus Associates, Inc., entitled Sheet 1, Property and Topography Survey, dated January 30th, 2019, revised May 31st, 2019. Sheet 2, Site Development Plan, dated January 30th, 2019, revised May 31st, 2019. Sheet 3, Site Development Plan, Septic System Design Plan, dated January 30th, 2019, revised June 4th, 2019. Sheet 4, Site Line Demonstration Plan, dated January 30th, 2019, revised May 31st, 2019. I just get so silly reading these. I think we should start having a contest if we've been reading the fastest. <laughs> Sheet 5, Construction Notes and Details, dated January 30th, 2019, revised May 31st, 2019. Sheet 6, Landscape Plan, dated May 3rd, 2019, revised May 31st, 2019. Then there was another sheet completed by Ron Dorelio, architect entitled Sheets A1 and A2, Proposed Building New England Country Barn, dated May 30th, 2019. With the following standard conditions, 2, 4, 7, and 14. Perfect. Right? Yep. And That's it. And it's it. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on that? I think it's a good use for that property. Yeah. Yeah. Do we, is it, do we go down? Well, I'm just making, just jump. Yeah. Oh. So I observe the observation. <laughs> Not cool. going with the one. Well, we can go, <laughs> we can play <laughs> duck, duck. Well, <laughs> could play silly. musical chairs. All right, so who second that? I did. Alex? Um, I approve it because I think it's a great, um, uh, it's going to really revitalize that piece of property from what's been going on there, or not, in the past, recent past. Yeah. I agree with um, Tristan's comments, and also it's it's a low impact uh, development for there, uh, considering uh, the heavy traffic in that area. I think it's well suited uh, for that parcel of land. I vote yes also. Uh, I feel it's a reutilization of the property. It's zoned properly and it's. Um, oh, I had a good point, but I forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> it brings it back on online for a tax base. There you go. <laughs> um, I think it's a good use of the property, um, limited impact. Um, mm -hmm. So we potentially could go there. Um, and bring you know, a, a business to the community. Um, so I vote yes on that. Uh, so that passes four to zero. All right, we are moving right along. We are now into. So sorry, just to review. So the next one, C special use permit four thirty eight to Tucky Road. That public hearing was closed. That, that was correct? closed, yep. and we will meet on Wednesday, October 9th. October 9th yes. at six p.m. Okay. Um, 
this amendment to uh, the permitted, uh, so that we continue to the next meeting, which is on the 17th. And so the public hearing is still open. The public hearing is still open. Okay. New business. Uh, so that's the site plan to the special permit we just passed, that's 2019-15 uh, uh, for 213-15 Fox and Road. You didn't, you didn't have to stay. Well, in fact, he told me to stay, my engineer. So oh, I mean, uh, uh, we appreciate your support. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Have a nice night. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't even see him back there. I, I did. He was getting yeah. silly. He was like texting somebody and getting silly, and yeah. I was getting silly because <laughs> he was getting silly. <laughs> Site plan for application 2019-15 as stated. You Wait, know, do we have to same those plan? By law? Like, I'm gonna find we... out from Barbara. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, make them shorter. <laughs> I mean, is it for people watching T? I can't imagine they're even keeping up anyway with how fast I feel. Like. I just, I mean, I think if you just say sheet one, two, three, five, I don't know. Yeah. Case, but this one. Uh, this I mean, one. clearly it's written down, so. Yeah. And it's yeah. referenced the date and the revision date. I'll find out. Yeah. So what are we going to do? I can't. This one? I get silly. Every so time. that I would just say it's a site plan application, um, and say the application number and the address. But then, as referenced in the plans, as stated under application 2019-12, because it's the same plans. Yeah. Except for special conditions. Right. And then you can just say standard conditions and just 1A, 2, whatever. But then the special conditions, I just wrote 2 yeah. on there. The lighting and the... Right. We want to see a crack of that. Oh. <laughs> Alex, can you check that? No. I will. No, I no. started it. I'm going to finish it. <laughs> I'm going to start a cookie. <laughs> and I'm gonna, I'm gonna which, you're going to finish it. Would, would you like a I cookie? I'm going to finish my cookie. No. Um, <laughs> get it together. I make a motion to approve... Planning and Zoning Application 2019-15 Site Plan Permit Request under Section 23, Schedule A, Line C1 and C2 to allow retail office use at 2015, 2013-15 Fox and Road, Map 41, Lot 68, B2 Zone, Owner Applicant Ralph Capasso as described in the submitted application <laughs> and shown on the following maps and drawings. Completed by Ben and Smiles, sheet one, two, three, four, five, and six. And the sheets completed by Ron Dorelio, um, sheets A1 and A2, with the following standard conditions 1A, 2, 4, 7, 9, 10, and 14. And then the following special conditions 22, lighting shall be full, full cutoff, and 23. Per section 53.8 of the zoning regulations, the number of parking spaces built can be reduced so as long as the required number be provided in the future if determined necessary. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on that? No. This is regular vote, so all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Seeing none, that, that passes four to zero. Who is the second, sorry? All right, well. Our next order of business is Connecticut General Statute uh, Capital Improvement Referral. So in front of you is the Capital Improvements Plan. So again, these are a larger project. You'll see on the cover sheet, just to read this out loud, comparing the current years, 2019 to 20, program to the version in the adopted budget book. Four items that are changed. Fire, company three, extrication tool funding was shifted. Public works, crack ceiling funded was shifted. NBIS auditorium brickwork, 471,900 was added by the town council action. And auditorium lighting and sound and flooring, 28,000 was added by town council action. Um, What's the brickwork? With, 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 uh, with the they brick needed work. to do sealing on the bricks because there's leaks occurring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's all the repairs on the Tomato School. Hmm. 
Is that cool? Yeah. Are the middle school? Yeah. Well, no, that's all the repairs still that they have to go through. Yep. So. Again, I don't know if you have any specific. I mean, I just kind of call your attention to. Uh, what page? Page five. Adopted funding. Oh, these are fiscal year 18, 19. No, last year? Yes. Sorry, so go to the next page, page six. Um, we have, regarding some planning projects, the welcome to town signs, there's $15,000 that was allocated Where to you continue that it? project. So that's a one, two, three, fourth item down from the top. Sorry. What am I missing? Oh, yeah. So again, that's it's the welcome signs are the main thing, but then there's also some requirements that we need to look into. Like Swychap Park was supposed to have a sign, doesn't have a sign, so we need to figure out do we still need to do a sign, where should we locate it? There's been a request by a resident to have a dog park sign um, by the dog park. But that went to town council and town council <coughs> saying, you know, Really, we should look at having an aug a sign a sign for the auger house or auger mm -hmm. farm, mm -hmm. and then maybe have the dog park just underneath of it, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. an arrow or something. Well, isn't the town working on getting the auger house registered? If yes. that happens, that's just going to change the sign over. So shouldn't that wait until they finish registering that? So the nomination for the auger house, the application has been completed by the consultant, so that went in. Um, we we can wait. Again, it's interesting with the state register, it puts the house on the register and that's what we have, the, the multiple buildings and actually um, North Street is on the state register, but it's not, you can even, you can have something on the state register and then you can demolish it the next year. You just can't use federal funds to demolish it. So there's no, it, it it elevates it by recognizing it and more through record keeping is what the consultant explained to me um, and obviously it's great for local for towns but unless you have a historic a local historic district with specific regulations that say no you can only paint your house these colors you can't put vinyl siding on this area of town you can't have a satellite dish on the front part of your house we don't have any of that so it's the nomination enables the building to get be recognized locally and get funding. Okay. <coughs> but there going back to the signage, sorry, nope. it it does tie it in. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's something that we might want to highlight. Yeah, to highlight the order house. Yeah. Is there a sign going to go? Welcome to Northburn. Um, coming up 17 from North Haven into Northburg? Yes, that okay. was one of the locations yeah. where, so we started with the locations where signs had existed. So we oh, did okay. Route 80 on the East Haven line, on the Guilford line, and then we did Route 22 on the Northburg, North Haven yep. line. Yep, I see that one. Yeah. And then the other locations, either there hadn't been a sign or there's some construction, so there's some logistics okay. that we need to work out, like in North Brantford at the, where they're putting in the rotary of Route 1 and 22. Yeah, we we're gonna wait for that. Um, yeah, I can see how you can save a lot of money down the road, not maybe up front. Where it says, town-wide replacement of PCs and servers, scrap PCs get max because they last longer. They do not have the, you don't need the technical representation no to fix them. You, pre you press a button. I mean, Alex, I'm not sure what you use, but I mean, Macs are way much easier to use and last <laughs> way longer than PCs. My, set, my Mac is eight years old. I can't even update it anymore. I was just saying, until they stop playing, you update it. Yeah, I can't update it. I mean, I can use it for what I use it for, Yeah, but, but I can't use it for, you know, if I want to do spreadsheets and transfer Your Mac or your PC? My Mac. Not my PC, it only lasts oh. two years, and then oh. I had all types of stuff. So, PCs, if you want to make a recommendation, right? Macs are the way to go. They're easier, lighter to carry. Lighter to carry? Yeah. So usually people aren't taking theirs home. What? What? They could. We could work from home. Yeah. Another good suggestion. I could save electricity. <laughs> <here. laughs> okay, how about that person from Connecticut, from the state, that left the state to move to Florida, 
because they have that new work from home, mm -hmm. and then kept their job for 14 months, and on the 14th month, they retired, but the only thing was they get to, to get uh, vested, 100% vested in their retirement. So they left the state to well, work from see, home, if you're doing the but work, they moved the all the way to Florida, and they, somebody matter. allowed that. So they could just get vested in One of my friends works from four, four days a week, she works from home. Yeah. Well, this person was just working in Florida. That's a little further than home. Yeah. Well, yeah. Florida was their home. Right. It, it wasn't. It they didn't say where your home needs to be. Why are they moving to Little Red Schoolhouse? <laughs> so that was discussed. So there was a um, concept of moving the Little Red Schoolhouse from Edward Smith Library down to Atwater to, ha to be part of like a historic Campus. area um, because there's a Ronald Spears house there's the old gas station there's the Miller barn yeah. from my it's my understanding though at the town council meeting the town council decided to not put that in the CIP for this year so they right now there's no plans to move the Little Red Schoolhouse because there's no funds for it what line was that uh, it's in our um, the one that we had in our packet. No, no, no. Yeah, no. Page six. Do you see it on there? Yeah, but we're on page six. Uh, Where does he move in? Culture, recreation. Yeah. Second one from the bottom. Oh, yeah. LED conversion? That's what mine says. LED relocation of Little Red Schoolhouse. $15,000. I must have got a different version. What page? I'm on page six. Page six. Okay. Culture slash recreation. The second one from the bottom. Mine is the Smith Library. You you must have it. Oh, did it? Oh, that's that's the one that went um, that was in your packet, right? Yeah. Yes. Oh. The one there should be another one in front of you that I gave you this oh, okay. evening. That's an updated one. That's right. an updated. Well, anyhow, so we just need to refer it. Cut. So, so we, so we want to just make to make the motion to refer <laughs> favorably, right? Is that what it is? Yes. I have a I have a motion. Oh, you do. And should we just make Ron read this one? I agree. Chairman's up. What's that? You can read I can't read it. He's not allowed. I can't bring him open to do Because you're the chairperson? I guess. Yeah. But I can't even cook. I'll help you out with this one. You notice how, you notice how I told her to make them shorter? Here you go. I'll leave the cookie while you're uh, reading. Don't make crunchy sounds. So I'll make a motion one, that the Planning Zone Commission report, okay. report favorably on the Town Council CGS Section 824 referral of the fiscal year 2019-2020 through 2024-2025 Capital Improvement Plan. I second. second. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mm -hmm. Any opposed? See none, that passes 4-0. Okay. Other business you want to do? So, um... Can I just uh, request to add one item? I guess I could do it under my town planner's report. Sure. Let's do that. Mm -hmm. So do you want to talk about farm events at another time? Yeah, we can, we can do that next week. Okay, next week. Yeah. Um, so I got a call today from someone with the um, Catholic Church. It's on, um, what road is that? Oh, it's off of Route 80. They're having a... Caputo? Caputo, thank you. Mm -hmm. They're having a um, tag sale on Saturday. They wondered if they could put an A-frame sign on Town Hall property because it has good visibility advertising their event. We have something in the regulation that talks about community events. Mm -hmm. As long as it's okay with the town manager, I just wanted to make sure it was okay with you all. She, would, she said she would put it out Saturday morning first thing and then bring it back in in the evening yeah. I mean it's also a, a zoning enforcement call um, but I just wanted to get your feel I see this. a frames out there for like the shredded event I know so how is that different than this it's not it's for, for one day yeah let me ask, I'm just gonna ask something isn't duties the same day yes October. Oh. It says October fifth. I'm just, I'm just throwing oh. it out there. Duties. I swear. I, I drove by there. They're, they're all tagged. Yeah. And it said. And I thought it said October fifth. Yeah, Shredded events October fifth okay. as well. So okay. now this is October. But 5th. I mean, that's neither here or there. Okay. 
if the town manager is okay with it, I mean, it's a one day event. It's on, you know. I know. I mean, it's the it's signs fun. turn into a slippery slope in both ways as far as like, well, sure, you can, but then everyone. But then it's also if we say no, then I. We're not being supportive. Well, a temporary A frame, but it's also um, it's one day. Yeah, it's, it's oh, as long as you put it out there. Yeah. If 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 we were if somebody's going to ask to put it out for like three weeks in a row, then we'd have to. I mean, that you may not want to do that. There's plenty yeah, of other places. Right. Well, I mean, go to a go. Yeah. You know, you can go to a property owner and ask them. If, you know, put it up on. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I but, agree. But I mean, agree. for one day. I agree because I see it right, right, for other. Okay. Mm. All right. Just wanted to get your. Yeah. It's not a vote or anything. I just wanted to get. Your, Thank you. Run. I'll tee it up for you. Can we go by the town planner's uh, report? That was it, yes. Yes. We can add some to the agenda, Ron, if you want to stay a little longer. I got a couple things I could definitely do. You want to start talking right. about the farm regulation? We'll be no, I'm just looking at our regular meetings will be on October 17th. And our special meeting, a special meeting on the 9th. Uh, at 6 o'clock. At 6 o'clock. And I motion we adjourn. I second. Alex, Alex, me, me and Alex, we vote.